Welcome back everyone. So today I'm going to talk about five film related items that I recommend, so stick around. So today I wanted to do something a little different than my usual camera reviews. Um, I did this once before and you guys seemed to enjoy it so I thought I'd do it again. So first up I've got a leather camera strap made by Do North Leather. This is on my Nikon F3. If you follow my blog you might remember uh, Mark Rossi. He is the owner of Do North Leather and I interviewed him. If you want to go read that I'll have a link down below. After speaking with him and uh, finding out his enthusiasm for his craft and what goes into it and how much thought goes into them. Um, I really wanted to recommend it to you guys. Mark sent me one of his simple camera straps to test out so I could get a little taste so to speak of what he does and that was when I decided to buy his Baron leather uh, neck strap and it's got the red lining on it so it matches my Nikon F pretty perfectly it's pretty much looks like it was made for the Nikon F3 I so far I've really enjoyed it I got it with the peak design clips here so that if I want to put it on any of my other cameras that have the peak design clips I can switch through and I don't have to buy tons of different camera straps for all my different cameras. I do recommend to get these if you do have more than one camera that you would like to switch the straps with. The leather is different than the leather made by uh, Clever Supply. Their leather is very soft and pretty much already fully broken in when you get them. It all depends on what you like and what you want, but Do North, their straps do come stiff. They come uh, more stiff than Clever Supply, but they do break in really quickly. As you can see, this is not stiff at all. Um, it very quickly started to break in, uh, which is really nice. It doesn't have any cracks or creases in it either from breaking in. Um, which is also good and like I said if you go read that article you can see all the thought uh, that Mark puts into his product and I highly recommend them so that's the first item on my list and um, Mark was kind enough also to give me a discount code to give you guys if you spend fifty dollars or more you can use the code AVCA at checkout and you'll get five percent off of your order of fifty dollars or more I'll leave that down in the description now my next recommendation grips for the Nikon F as you know that's probably my favorite SLR is the Nikon F um, I get asked a lot what this grip is and um, it is from a man named Wayne Young. He, I met him on Facebook and he's just a wealth of knowledge when it comes to lenses and camera, film cameras and photography in general. And he's a really nice guy. And you can buy these grips from him from his eBay or from his Facebook. You can just contact him on Facebook. I will leave um, I will leave both links down below. All the grips are made from aluminum alloy with an anodized finished, so, uh, finish, so they are really well made, really strong, uh, not heavy. The Nikon F is a heavy camera, but it doesn't add to it. It screws on underneath um, through the tripod mount and with the Nikon F because the uh, back comes off you do have to remove the grip before you can remove the back that would be the only downfall for this grip grip but um, for me it's not been a problem I'm always able to unscrew it using my fingernail and it's not a problem I've never dropped my camera it's never fallen off of the camera and it's really nice and you can fill in the F if you want using a whiteout pen or a real thin pen I did this one I put the F on there otherwise it's engraved with an F I also have the grip for my Nikon F2 that he makes and he also makes a grip for the Nikon FM2 and also the F3 so you can buy um, a grip from him for the Nikon F, F2, F3, and the FM2. I think those are all of them. But the other grips, like for the FM, for the F2 and the F3, uh, since their backs open up uh, regularly, you don't have to remove the grip when you uh, every time you want to load new films. That's only with the Nikon F, as far as I know. I don't have the other cameras. I only have the Nikon F2 and the F with the grip. So. Um, 
that's a good thing with the other grips you don't have to remove them if you don't want to so the third item on my list is a bit odd <laughs> again if you follow my blog you might know that I recently got a um, Mamiya RB67 I got it at a great deal because there was a bent uh, filter ring stuck on the lens um, it was the, there was no glass it was just the ring itself uh, it didn't affect anything but it was ugly and it was dented so I figured there was no way this filter was ever gonna come off I tried everything that uh, I could find recommended online uh, first I bought this filter wrench um, which you could put around the filter and turn it helps you get a better grip and when that didn't work and several other things didn't work I didn't think anything was gonna get this thing off but one guy on the um, Mamiya RB67 Facebook group recommended I start to get some tools of the trade, which was great, uh, great advice. I'm always looking to get tools of the trade. He recommended I get a lens vise. So it looks like this. I got it off Amazon. And what happens is you tighten it and screw it in so that it opens up inside of the lens filter, not on the outside of the lens, inside. Now what this does is once it's tight, really tight, you turn it and it takes the the bend out of the filter ring. It helped get some of the dent out and it was still stuck, but I had my fiance Kelsey hold that, <laughs> hold it in place with the wrench to get a good grip and she was able to turn it enough to get it loose and the filter ring came off finally. So I'm sure if you've ever used filters, there's a, even when they're not bent, they get stuck and it scares you. But if you've ever been in that case or that situation, it's good to have these things on hand, these tools of the trade. They're cheap, they're on Amazon. I'll leave a link down below if you would like to buy these things to have them on hand for situations like that. So next, let's get to my favorite items, which are photo books. I love photo books. The fourth item on my list is Leaving and Waving by Deanna Dykeman. I would be lying if I didn't say that. I did shed a few tears reading this book. Deanna made this book after compiling family photos over 27 years um, when she her and her family would go visit her parents at their home. She was just taking photos of her family and over time she realized that she had a lot of photos that she was taking from the car as she was leaving so her parents would be waving goodbye and over the span of the book you see her parents together waving goodbye and then slowly over time you see them aging and then it comes down to only her mother waving goodbye and then the last photo um, is just of her home just of the house without either parent and that photo really just hits you and the weight of it the meaning behind it just hits you right away when you get to that it really is a beautiful book and I highly recommend it because it really shows the meaning of photography really for me at least um, what photography can do and it cap what it captures and what you can do yourself just by taking photos of your family this is a beautiful example of that so yeah I highly recommend this book now the last item on my list is another photo book and I saved it for last because it's probably my favorite uh, it's hard to pick a favorite because I have a lot of photo books, but um, I have to say I think this is probably my favorite at the moment. And I heard about this book from Alex Soth's uh, YouTube channel. I don't know if you've checked out his YouTube channel, but I have to say that's probably one of the greatest things that's happened to the film photography community recently is Alex Soth's videos. I just love seeing him sitting there in his library <laughs> going over his books. just nerding out on photo books just like we all do but um, one of the books he went over recently was Encampment Wyoming and this is probably going to be my favorite book for a while it's a selection of photos by Laura Webb Nichols and they were taken in Encampment Wyoming which was a copper mining town at the foot of the Sierra Mountains, I think the Sierra Madre Mountains, and she uh, started taking photos in 1899 up until her death in 1962, and all of this archive of her best photos 
along with diary entries that she was writing along the way and it serves as sort of a biography. So Laura was a first-hand witness to life in the early 20th century and she documented her life in a small settlement called Encampment, Wyoming and um, she went on to have a studio of her own and through two marriages and several children she managed to have her own successful business which I think was amazing especially for that time and she became a portrait photographer as well and a lot of these portraits are just beautiful she shows uh, sickness happiness all these all the different things that went on in her life around her and around her together the photos and the diary give you a glimpse into a small slice of what America was like back then and I absolutely love these photos and I think this book is going to remain my favorite for a very long time so encampment Wyoming I definitely if you can find it I'm not sure where um, you might have to get it secondhand um, it's no longer in stores I lucked out and found it in an obscure small uh, bookstore online so yeah I definitely recommend both of these books they're really great I hope you've enjoyed this video uh, let me know down in the comments if this is the kind of video you like watching if so I love sharing these things with you it's fun to have conversations with you guys about things that I've picked up um, let me know if there's a certain uh, film related item you're enjoying right now maybe a photo book or something you can recommend let me know in the comments Please hit that thumbs up if you have enjoyed this so that I know and please hit that subscribe button so that you will know when my next video comes out. But until next time, stay motivated and keep shooting.